First story. Mom's delusional 24-year-old fiancé demands 35-year-old me to call him daddy. Refers to me as his boy and other pet names. Asks me to go on baseball matches. And claims he is the man for our family. The man-child had a meltdown because I refused his offers. Still, my mom took his side and demands I roll with him for his sake. Please buckle in, because this is all so weird. I'm a 35-year-old man. And for some backstory, my dad died when I was 19 leaving my mom with me and my two siblings I'm the oldest. It took some time, but eventually my mom started dating again. We don't live together per se, but our houses back onto each other and have a gate, so it's pretty common for her to offer to do my laundry or for me to just go over for dinner or go look after our dog, that kind of stuff. Plus, me and my siblings go over there for dinner every other Friday night or so. A bit after she started, the men she's been dating have been getting younger and younger, and I've never had a problem with them. She's been very open to me and my siblings that she wants to get married again. And we've always been supportive. At least after the initial shocks. The latest guy is by far the most serious, and they've been dating since around last June. He proposed at the start of autumn, and they want to get married next summer. Again, me and my siblings are fine with this because it's her life and we trust him. He's a nice guy, and they clearly love each other. But anyway. So long and short is, this weekend, her fiancé, let's call him Phil calls me and asks me if I could come over. I say yeah, sure, I'll be over after work, and I assumed he just needed help with some DIY stuff they're doing. When I get over there, he calls me sport and says we need to talk. I should mention this is something he does to me and my little brother, calling us things like kid, sport, scout, little buddy, or my personal favorites, red and blue, seemingly out of nowhere. My brother is 30, by the way. He tried it with my little sister 28 too once and called her princess once but he stopped when she just stared at him. So the thing with Phil is that he reminds me a lot of Charlie Day's character in Horrible Bosses, in that his sole ambition has always been to meet a girl, get married, and have a family. When he told me and my brother this, my brother made some joke about how maybe our mom's going to come short on the last part, and he got very upset. But they made up after. Anyway, so I go round and I ask if my mom's around, and he says no, it's just him, and that we really need to talk man to man. I say sure, and he starts talking about how he's always wanted to be a father, etc., and raise a son to call his own. And then he drops this bombshell by saying, Now I know I can never replace your father, the man who made you, but it would mean the world to me if you could call me dad. I'll admit it. I sniggered a little. And then I knew he was serious because he looked like he was about to cry. And he didn't drop it either. I asked if he really meant it, and he got really emotional and started talking about what it means to be a man and how his purpose is to have and provide for a family, and he wants me and my siblings to be part of that family. Like he reiterated, he'll never replace my father, and this did rub me the wrong way a bit. But he's ready to step up and be my dad, and provide for and protect me and my siblings. And I'm just sitting there thinking, dude, I'm a decade older than you and live in a separate house. I don't need providing for, and even if I did, I don't think a guy a third of my age who works part-time at the hardware store and is into collecting manga is the man to do it. No offense if you are into that. Lol. Just. I don't know. I was a bit taken aback. I was in shock so just said, okay. And he gets emotional again. But in a happy way. Talking about how he wants to go camping or go to a baseball game. I don't even like baseball. Lol and how he joined the Lions this year. And how he wants to bring me into it too, as his boy. Which just feels so surreal even more so as I'm a Shriner. So all this talk of service and charity isn't the brag he thinks it is because again, I'm 10 years older than this guy. Well, I ended it by just saying, this has gotten a bit too weird, and I was going home. He got very upset, and I left. I called my brother, and he agreed it sounded, weird as f. Later, my mom called me, and she wasn't disappointed, but admitted it's made him very upset and depressed. I told her that if he's embarrassed, he doesn't need to be. I get he's excited about the marriage and we can just laugh this off as a funny story. She then said that wasn't what he was upset about. He and she too a bit is upset about the fact he poured his heart out and I rejected him. She said yeah, it is a bit kooky, but this is how he proves to himself he's a man. And I guess I was a bit angry and said something like, first off, it's not my job to certify what's between his legs, and second, this doesn't prove he's a man. It just proves he's a nut job. I apologized immediately, but she said she didn't want to hear it and hung up. She called back ten minutes later, and we apologized, and she begged me to just go along with it until he has some kids to call his own. I won't go too much into the details here, 
but she sort of let slip they plan to try IVF treatment because she's not ready to give up on being a mom just yet. And while I, uh, have my own thoughts about whether or not that's a good idea, I'm not here to litigate on that. We finished up fine, and I reiterated I'd support her. And she agreed that it was definitely a stressful situation for me, but begged me to at least think about it. Which leads me to here. I did think it over, and obviously I'm going to say no. I had a dad, and he died rest in peace, dad, and that's the only dad I've ever needed, I've ever wanted, and I'll ever bestow that title on. I'm not asking if someone's unreasonable or what I should do, more so what I should say. This clearly means a lot to him for some reason, and I deeply love my mom, so I want to try and minimize the damage. Especially as we're still so involved in each other's lives, and they live behind me. How can I make it clear to them, as painlessly as possible, that I think this is weird and borderline offensive? I really don't want to rip the bandage off, because I fear what it might do to the family. Edit. Showed my brother the post. And he laughed so hard he started coughing. Lol. Then said we should call him Dr. Phil. And each other blue and red so swapped the nicknames he gave us around. Thoughts? Edit 2. As people were asking. He has no access to my mom's money or anything like that. She rents the house. And it came pre-furnished and otherwise has no real assets. She doesn't make a lot of money anyway. So there's no punitive motive we could think of. Comments. Raven Dorkum. I wonder if he grew up without a dad. He's giving a weird 1950s energy to this whole thing that feels like he only knows about dads from seeing them on TV. OP. Oh no, his dad's still alive. Both his parents are. I've met them. They definitely feel. Odd about the whole situation, but go along with it for his sake. Update. Original post and slightly amended the title for clarity. Anyway, so I told both my siblings, and we agreed we'd collectively put our foot down with Phil at our next family dinner next week. Especially after an incident where Phil referred to my brother as sport and asked if he wanted to go see a baseball game with him. Admittedly, I was a bit spurred on by what you all said and got involved, pinging him back with, Aw, no tickets for me, daddy. And my brother responded with, Daddy wants to me all to himself. Hmm. Hot. And Phil took a few minutes to respond before saying he was shocked, speechless, and disgusted. He then messaged me in private to say he was utterly appalled and that he'd never disrespect his own father the way you boys did. I kind of lost it at this point and said, Right, that's because you're not my father. Phil, you're a 24-year-old man-child dating my mother. You have no right to my respect, especially not to the respect a father gets. I immediately said sorry, but then blocked his number and left the group chat. Apparently, he sent a similar thing to my brother, who responded with more daddy stuff, and Phil blocked him. Well, uh, that aside, I don't think that family dinner is going ahead. After the original post blew up, it seems someone from his Lions Club found it, and reported it to their chair or whatever, and Phil has either been expelled, resigned, or is in the process of one of the two. He has removed nearly all mentions of the Lions from his social media, and no longer mentions being a member with his last post on it being some cryptic goodbye post where he kind of drones on about what it means to be a man in the modern day and the duty of fatherhood bestowed on all men at birth. Really weird SHT. My mom called me half in a panic, half in a rage after, about the stuff I'd been telling about him before breaking down and saying we needed to meet, which we did and got my brother to go over too. I know he has temporarily moved back in with his parents in the next town over, but from my understanding, they still want to go ahead with the wedding but I think that's more so because they've already spent money on it. When she said she was determined to have more kids plural. My brother did step up and ask if she really thought that was a good idea at her age, and I pointed out that assuming she had the baby next year and she lived to 80, they still wouldn't have finished college. She just stammered on about how people live longer these days before breaking down crying and admitting she's not ready to give up on mothering due to some deep-seated trauma and fears about the family breaking apart that I won't go into for her sake. When we reassuranced her that we weren't going anywhere, she calmed down, and we had a very good, honest conversation where she'd agreed to drop the IVF stuff on the grounds that it'd be too expensive and unlikely to get greenlit. But she's still adamant it's scientifically possible, and she should be allowed to do it from an ethical standpoint, because she has to win that argument, and has agreed to look into fostering instead. Me and my brother highly doubt anything will ever come of that, so we're not that worried anymore. The very good news is she's also agreed to look into therapy psychiatric, helped to deal with her trauma, and we've helped get her in touch with a nice lady in town to unpack all this in a more healthy way. So at least one person is getting the help they need. I have no idea what's happened with Phil or what's going to happen with him, but I did make it clear to my mom that he is not my dad. He's not even my stepdad. I'm not a kid. 
and he's never going to be either one outside of legal F. Uri. She relented pretty quickly. I think she's finally broken out of her shell at least, and we've agreed that if things go ahead, that's going to be a huge red line. Though I don't know if he'll want to be friends with me after all this. Anyway, thanks for the help on the original post, y'all. Second story. The boy who I thought protected my disabled sister from her school bullies sought her. So I took my revenge, ruining his life. Now he is disowned and speeding the rest of his life in prison. A quick preface. This all happened about a year ago. I will not be using real names because I could be in deep SHT. If I did all actors in this story, will have their names replaced with Jojo references. This is a long one. Context. My little sister, henceforth known as Holly, is mute she can actually whisper a little, but it takes a lot of effort on her part. She's been mute ever since she was five, when she lost her ability to speak in an accident. She's very smart, and she's a good-looking kid. At the time of these events, she was 16, and I was 21. Me and my sister live together in an apartment, because my mother is a roamer who isn't well-suited to take care of a teenager. She has our twin kid siblings, but not my sister and me. My dad is distant from the family, so helping my sister through high school falls to me. I work at a car parts shipping company, so I get paid just enough to get by. Because of our relatively poor living situation and my sister's inability to speak, she gets bullied at school. Generally, it isn't much of a problem, but in the few months leading up to these events, she was having increased problems with it. Build up. At the time, Holly was 16, but she was a sophomore in high school due to failing a year in middle school. She refuses to take special education courses now because they didn't help her at all. Because she's good-looking and is older than most of her class, she gets attention from juniors and seniors. It's mostly negative attention, but there was one guy, who I will refer to as D.I.O. from now on he's the villain of this story, who treats her really nicely. He's a senior and, at this time, is 18. He repels bullies from her because he's a tall, handsome, tough guy and bullies don't want to mess with him. I don't interfere with them because my sister is visibly happy when she comes home from school and whenever she's around him. I didn't let them hang out alone together, but supervised them hanging out a few times. Anyway, King Crimson a few months, and she stops coming home happy. She isn't hanging out with him anymore either, and although I ask her multiple times, she won't tell me anything about it. I confront him about it, and he evades the topic. At this point I'm suspicious, but I don't know what to be suspicious of. Researching. I'm getting more and more worried about Holly, so I go to her counselor and assistant principal to ask about her activities at school. From what I learn, she still spends all her free time near D.I.O. at school. I find this strange, since she doesn't seem happy anymore. This is where the illegal stuff starts. A few days later, I invite Holly and D.I.O. on a dinner night to Olive Garden. No one can resist Olive Garden. While we're there, I do two things that are completely illegal. One, I steal his phone, which I've seen the password to. And two, I read his texts and emails. Anything I can to find out what's happened between them. I don't find what I'm looking for, but I do find out that he drinks and smokes weed with his friends on weekends. This will be relevant later. A few days later, I find his phone in the laundry and say it must have ended up in one of our coats by accident. I know for a fact he got it back because he called me to thank me for having Holly return it. I still didn't have what I was looking for, so I went back to the school and used his previous texts as grounds to check CCTV for any suspicious activity. There wasn't anything suspicious by school standards, but there was something that caught my eye. It was my sister going to the central bathroom in the school, and him going to the boys' room of the same bathroom about a minute later. The bathrooms are separated by a wall, but there's a janitorial closet that opens into both bathrooms and is completely in the blind zone of anyone walking into the bathrooms, let alone the CCTV cameras. At this point, I began to suspect that something was happening between them in that bathroom. It was the only one with a closet like that. And if my memory served me, the closet didn't have a proper lock. It just locked from the outside on both sides. Boiling point. Now that I suspected something, I confronted Holly about it. She broke down crying, and after 15 minutes of consoling, she shakily signed to me something that made my blood boil. Apparently, it was far worse than I expected. I had thought they were going in there and doing drugs or something, since D.I.O. was the kind of guy who would pull that kind of thing. As it turns out, according to Holly, he brought her in there one day, closed the doors, held her down, and sawed her. He told her that he would know if she told anyone, and he would hurt her if she did, because she physically could not scream for help or make any kind of loud noise. For that matter, he got away with it. And the worst part is, he was threatening her into meeting him there every couple of days and doing that to her. I was livid. 
My first instinct was to call the police, but I realized that there was no evidence except the testimony of a mute girl. I wouldn't be satisfied with police intervention anyway. The first thing I did was call Holly in for a week from school. Family emergency can get them a week of excused absences easily. The next thing I did was find out where he lived. After that, I planned the most brutal revenge I could think of. Highly illegal revenge. My first step was to break into his house. It turns out his parents go out a lot, and he leaves to smoke and drink with his friends. I knew from reading his texts that there was a spare key on top of the porch light in the backyard. That Saturday, I scoped out the place and waited for everyone to leave. I then began phase one of my revenge. I went into his house through the back door and found his room. I smashed his PC, stole his wallet, and pissed on his bed. Then I poorly hid two small bags of weed in his house. I have a friend who grows. Finally, to hide the fact that it was targeted, I tossed up the rest of the house but didn't take anything. I then went to a Starbucks and used the Wi-Fi and DIO's debit card. He didn't have credit to purchase a bunch of SX toys in his name and send them to his house. I then left his wallet sitting near a homeless man sleeping on a park bench. Next, I contacted his parents and told them I had seen their son drinking and smoking with a group of teenagers. They were furious, which leads me to believe that wasn't the first time something like that had happened. Finally, I went to the back road. He walked on his way home from his drinking parties, which I had found out in a text from one of his friends. I waited for two hours in some bushes for him to walk by, and then wearing sunglasses and a hoodie jumped him. I demanded his money and phone, although I knew he didn't have his wallet. I kept one hand in my hoodie pocket, pointing it like I had a gun, which he believed. He handed over his phone and ran away. I then finished up my plan by using his phone, which I still had the password to to send an email to the school from his school email, confessing to saying my sister in the janitorial closet multiple times, as well as possessing drugs on school grounds and drinking alcohol when he was underage. Then I snapped his phone on my knee and went home. Aftermath. My sister went back to school the following Monday, armed with a can of mace I bought her. D.I.O. wasn't at school, and she was called in by her counselor. She confessed, and he was charged with SA, underage drinking, and illegal drug possession. On top of that, his parents completely disowned him, and he was expelled from the school. Sadly, this story doesn't have a completely happy end. This whole ordeal sent Holly into a downward spiral. Her grades fell behind, and she barely smiled. In March of 2018, she attempted self-harm by cutting herself, and it was pure luck that I found her in time. She's getting better now, but the emotional trauma will probably affect her for life. I pray to whatever cruel gods are out there that he gets a taste of his own medicine in prison. Secret Voices Hey guys, I highly doubt that the story is even real, but I can't be sure. Nonetheless, let's hope the sister was recovered from the hell that the jerk put her through. Let me know what you think of the story. Third Story OP was groomed by her nurse, but she got afraid to out him, blaming herself, but mom has great timing and caught the nurse red-handed. Honestly, this is so weird to me that I just want to yell into the void. I-16F have stage 2 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Whenever I go into the center for treatment, I generally have the same set of nurses treating me. I don't know if it's the same in all oncology places, but I feel like you can just see that a lot of the staff feel bad about all the kids who are sick here. They do a lot of stuff with us. They give us stuffed animals, stickers, and ice pops when I don't feel like puking from my infusions. Just generally trying to make us feel better. Because I guess no one likes to see sick kids. Anyway, I thought for a while that this is what my guy nurse was trying to do. But recently I've been thinking that's not quite it. He gives me a lot of compliments on my appearance, which I thought at first was because I was insecure about my hair. But they've become focused a little on my body. He told me he thought I'd look cute in a little black dress and he gave me a red lipstick as a gift too. Which is, weird. He's also been getting more handsy. I was puking at my last session gross, I know. And while he was pulling my hair back, one of his hands was on my chest. I was obviously not in a place to tell him to F off, but it was so uncomfortable. My mom hasn't seen it because we've gotten to a point where she just has to drop me off and pick me up after. I'm just not exactly sure what I should be doing, and I kind of want to scream about it. I'm also sad because this nurse genuinely made me feel special and cared for, and it suddenly clicked in my head that he's actually a creep. Also, what do I even do? Like, I obviously can't stop my cancer treatments. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Relevant comments. Tesla and kids. Honey, I'm a mom. I have chronic illnesses, and I've worked in healthcare. None of this is okay. Mom hat. Talk to your mom. 
She's dropping you off because she trusts the staff to take care of you. They're failing at that. Regardless of her stress level, it would stress her more if this escalated and she found out later. Chronic illness patient. You trust your care team to care for you and not take advantage of the fact you're young and incredibly sick. This is not appropriate. Healthcare professional. If I saw or heard this kind of behavior of a fellow colleague, I'd be disgusted, and I'd absolutely report it to my superiors. Please say something to either your mom or another nurse or both. I assure you, if you tell your mom, she will talk to the staff for you, but you have to tell someone. This is not okay behavior. My husband said, I'd absolutely smoke that guy, because he has daughters. There's no human out there that thinks this kind of behavior is okay. Please say something. OP. You don't think it'd be too much for me to tell my mom. She trusts that they take care of me, but it's mainly because she still has to work that she drops me off. I hate causing more problems for her. Thank you. I just worry that I'm overreacting. I've overreacted a lot to minor problems recently. Ancient Star 111. I'm an oncologist at a cancer clinic. If a patient told me this about a male nurse, I know for sure none of us would protect him. We would report him immediately. So please have your mom talk to the manager. Sand Maiden. It doesn't matter if he's just being nice. Trust your instincts. It absolutely 100% doesn't matter what he's thinking. You are there to get well. Feeling creeped out or stressed out isn't conducive to good health. I understand you wanting to protect your mom and even the nurse in case you're wrong. Give your mom a heads up a few days before your next treatment. Ask her to come in with you. If you have more time to safely observe his behavior, you may get a clearer picture of his intentions. Update. So I had another session of chemo today and SHT kinda hit the fan. And I figured those of you who messaged me would appreciate an update. I didn't actually tell my mom what was happening. I got too nervous and chickened out. I did ask her to come with me to my appointment today though, and she did. Like some of you said, he acted differently when she was there. He didn't touch me at all and didn't compliment me how he usually does. There was a period of a few minutes, though where she left to go to the bathroom, and he got really close to me and made a comment about how it was weird my mom was here today and how he liked our alone time. He got really close to me and sat on the edge of the bed I'm in for my sessions. Then he brushed my hair behind my ear and got close, like the way you see in romance movies before people kiss, and I was so uncomfortable. Also, thinking back, that was a dumb move on his part. Anyway, thank F for my mom's timing because she walked in with another nurse she was having a conversation with, and they both saw what was happening. I think all of us froze for a second before my mom was cursing him out. I think she would have decked him if I didn't grab her hand before she could. Anyway, I refused to talk about it for the rest of my infusion session, but afterwards a bunch of people were asking me questions, and they said something about a report. My mom threatened to call the cops or sue or something. I don't know how serious she was, or if she was just mad. But yeah, my mom said that she'd make sure someone came with me for all my sessions in the future. The nurse lady who was in charge said she'd personally be my nurse whenever she worked, and that if she wasn't working, she'd have a woman she trusted with me. They also let me pick out a stuffed animal, because I've always really liked them. I got a stuffed elephant and named her Ellie. I know it's unoriginal. Don't come for me. When we got home, my big sister practically went feral and bounced between lecturing me about noticing inappropriate behavior and threatening bodily harm on the nurse. She was mad my mom didn't actually punch him. My mom was a little mad that I didn't tell her why I really wanted her to come before, but it doesn't seem like she's really mad. She keeps hugging me and telling me that she loves me. So yeah, problem probably resolved. Edit. For those of you messaging me and telling me I was dumb not to tell my mom the whole story, and telling me that by waiting to tell so long, I let other people suffer, please stop. My mom ended up finding out in the end. And I was scared to say anything earlier. Scared I was wrong. Scared people would be mad at me. Scared people wouldn't believe me. I was just scared. I know, the stress and effect and all that. But I already know that I was stupid, and would appreciate it if you'd stop telling me what I already know. I already know that I didn't do this right. And that other people probably suffered, because I was scared. Relevant comments. OP. Yeah, his hand was on my breast. Hopefully it won't be a problem anymore. They didn't say specifically what was going to happen. But they did say, I shouldn't see him again. Orange Egatorder. Hey friend. You've already gotten many great responses, but I wanted to insert my two cents as a big sister, whose own little sister about your age, too has been through something similar. I want you to know, from the bottom of my heart, they are not mad at you, and it is not your fault. 
They are furious that someone thought to take advantage of a vulnerable young girl. I don't even know you, and I was ready to fight the guy for you. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. But I'm so glad the staff and your family are aware of the situation and are addressing it appropriately. I am beyond proud of you, and I know your mom and sister are, too. I wish you and Ellie the best of health, luck, and loads and loads of good karma. Few Improvement 16357 Darling, you aren't perfect. Nobody is. We'd all like to think that we would smack down the creeps. But the reason we don't is because it's complicated. Are they really creeps? Are we overreacting? Has he really done anything that bad? I'm sure he meant well. They get away with it because they are good at making it seem like it's all in our heads. Manipulators are going to manipulate. And they are good at it. You are just like other girls, and there is nothing wrong with that. You did great. You got help, and he was stopped. Don't let the armchair social justice warriors make you feel bad about anything. Corlata linked. Oh babes. I really, really hope that the reaction of everyone seeing this creep in action told you how much you've been underreacting to him. You were not the first, BTW. He seems to have a nice little plan going from what you're saying. Hugs, hugs, and even more hugs. Always mute. I'll be straight with you. There will be an investigation. This may involve the authorities, but also your local health department. They cannot let him in the building to work until they clear him from the investigation. And by what you said, he won't be cleared. He's going to get in big trouble, as he deserves. You did good. It is scary to be patient with someone who is trying to take advantage of you. He was in a position of power. You deserve a care team that is about supporting you through your treatments and helping you heal not someone hurting you. Sending you big hugs. The rest of your staff will be on your side. This is disgusting behavior of a nurse. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.